This week's bombing in Manchester was another gruesome reminder that the threat from radical Islamic terrorism is ongoing. And President Trump's journey to the Middle East illustrated yet again how the country central to the spread of this terrorism, Saudi Arabia, has managed to evade and deflect any responsibility for it. The facts are well known. For five decades, Saudi Arabia has spread its narrow, puritanical, and intolerant version of Islam, originally practiced almost nowhere else, across the Muslim world. Osama bin Laden was Saudi, as were 15 of the 19 terrorists of 9-11. And we know through a leaked email by former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, in recent years, the Saudi government, along with Qatar, has been providing clandestine financial and logistical support to ISIL and other radical Sunni groups in the region. Saudi nationals make up the second largest group of foreign fighters in the Islamic State, and by some accounts, the largest in the terrorist group's Iraqi operations. ISIS draws its beliefs from Saudi Arabia's Wahhabi version of Islam. As the former imam of the kingdom's Grand Mosque said last year, ISIS, quote, exploited our own principles that can be found in our books. We follow the same thought, but apply it in a refined way. Saudi money is now transforming European Islam. Leaked German intelligence reports show that charities closely connected with government offices of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Kuwait are funding mosques, schools, and imams to disseminate a fundamentalist, intolerant version of Islam throughout Germany. In Kosovo, the New York Times says Carlotta Gaul describes the process by which a 500-year tradition of moderate Islam is being destroyed. From their bases, the Saudi-trained imams have propagated the supremacy of Sharia law as well as ideas of violent jihad, she writes. Saudi Arabia's government has begun to slow many of its most egregious practices. It is now being run de facto by a young, intelligent reformer, Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who appears to be refreshingly pragmatic. But so far, the Saudi reforms have mostly translated into better economic policy for the kingdom, not a break with its powerful religious establishment. Trump's speech on Islam seemed to zero in on the problem when he said, No discussion of stamping out this threat would be complete without mentioning the government that gives terrorists all three, safe harbor, financial backing, and the social standing needed for recruitment. But Trump, it turns out, was talking not about his host, Saudi Arabia, but rather Iran. Now, to be clear, Iran is a destabilizing force in the Middle East and supports some very bad actors. But it is wildly inaccurate to describe it as the source of jihadi terror. According to an analysis of the Global Terrorism Database by Leif Wenar of King's College, 94% of deaths caused by Islamic terrorism since 2001 were perpetrated by ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and other Sunni jihadists. Iran is fighting those groups, not fueling them. Almost every terror attack in the West has had some connection to Saudi Arabia. Virtually none has been directly linked to Iran. Trump has adopted the Saudi line on terrorism, which deflects any blame from the kingdom and redirects it toward Iran. The Saudis dazzled Trump's inexperienced negotiators with attention, arms deals, and donations to a World Bank fund for women that Ivanka Trump is championing, even though Trump demanded in 2016 that the Clinton Foundation return money from the Saudis who, quote, want women as slaves and to kill gays, unquote. In short, the Saudis played Donald Trump. America has now signed up for Saudi Arabia's Middle East policy a relentless series of battles against Shiites and their allies throughout the region. That will enmesh Washington in a never-ending sectarian struggle, fuel instability, and complicate its ties with countries like Iraq that want good relations with both sides. But most important, it will do nothing to address the direct and ongoing threat to Americans, jihadi terrorism. I thought that Trump's foreign policy was going to put America first, not Saudi Arabia.